Hey everyone, today I want to talk about creatine and in particular whether or not you should be concerned that your creatine supplement may be harming your kidneys. So I'm sure you're all familiar with creatine. Creatine is one of the most popular supplements out there. I'd say there's pretty good evidence that daily supplementation with creatine at around five grams per day can lead to relatively modest but real improvements in body composition, especially when used in combination with resistance training and an overall healthy diet. There's a growing perception and some data to support this that higher doses of creatine, 10 grams per day or even more, may provide some protective effects against dementia, cognitive decline, and perhaps other health benefits as well. So creatine is a super interesting supplement. I personally take creatine and it was my experience with creatine and doing some blood work uh, that included markers of kidney function that led me to make this video. So I'm sure you're all familiar with your kidneys. They are an essential organ. They are important for filtering waste and fluid from our blood, which we then excrete in our urine. Their kidneys are also important for helping you keep an appropriate balance of water, salt, minerals, blood glucose, things like that. So super important organ. Um, so why would we think that creatine might have a negative impact on kidney function? Well, it turns out that the most common marker in blood work used to assess kidney function is something called creatinine. Creatinine is a molecule found in our bodies that our kidneys clear. And it turns out that structurally, creatinine is very closely related to creatine. In fact, it turns out that creatine can be non-enzymatically converted into creatinine in our bodies. The molecule that's directly downstream from creatine called creatine phosphate can also be non-enzymatically converted into creatinine in our bodies. So there is this relationship between creatine and creatinine. So it turns out that I had stopped using creatine for, I don't know, probably 12, maybe 18 months. I'd been supplementing at five grams a day um, and then I stopped for a while. And then when I restarted, I bumped myself up to 10 grams per day based on this literature that I was referring to, suggesting potentially other benefits of creatine at higher doses in addition to positive impacts on uh, muscle uh, function and body composition. So I started supplementing with 10 grams of creatine and I got my routine blood work, which I do usually quarterly here at Optispan. And the marker of kidney function creatinine was through the roof. So I had a creatinine level of 1.43 outside the normal range. And this was interpreted as an impairment of kidney function. Now, the way that we get from creatinine to an estimate of kidney function is through another measure that you will get reported on your blood work called EGFR or estimated glomerular filtration rate. So your glomeruli are parts of your kidney, capillaries in your kidney, that uh, are important for filtering waste products from the blood. So what you're actually measuring in the EGFR is how well the glomeruli are functioning, how well they're filtering impurities out of your blood, impurities like creatinine. Um, it turns out this is though a calculated measure, and that's where the E comes in, the estimated GFR, and it's calculated based on the amount of creatinine in your blood. So because my creatinine was high, this led to my estimated glomerular filtration rate to be low, as if my kidneys were impaired. I was below the normal range, had a EGFR of 58, which is consistent with early stage kidney disease. Very concerning because there's not a lot we can do for kidney disease. And um, so if I was basing my blood work only on creatinine, I would be very concerned at this point. And that's what you're typically going to get in a standard blood panel from your primary care physician. Now, fortunately, at Optispan, we don't rely on creatinine as the only measure of kidney function. We use another 
blood-based biomarker called cystatin C. Cystatin C is generally thought to be a more consistent and reliable marker of kidney function. Cystatin C is a protein that is produced by all of the nucleated cells in our body, and it's produced at a fairly constant rate. And our kidneys remove cystatin C from our blood, very much like they remove creatinine from our blood. But because the total number of cells in our body isn't changing substantially, at least if we're in good health, the rate of production of cystatin C is thought to be fairly constant. And therefore, the amount of cystatin C measured in your blood is going to be a pretty good estimate of how well your kidney is functioning to remove the cystatin C from your blood. So through a different formula, EGFR can also be calculated from the concentration of cystatin C in your blood. And in exactly the same blood test, I had cystatin C levels that were in the normal range because cystatin C is not a product of creatine breakdown, which led to my EGFR in this case being 99. So that's a big difference from 58. 99 actually for someone in their mid 50s like me is a pretty good reading for EGFR or for kidney function. So I feel much better about the state of my kidneys based on the cystatin C measurement. This is all just to illustrate that the EGFR number that you might see on your blood work is not always a valid measure of your kidney function. It's an estimate and it's an estimate that's based on an indirect measurement of other, either creatinine or cystatin C. So it turns out I waited a little bit. I stopped taking my creatine. I went back in for another blood draw. And sure enough, my creatinine levels had returned to the normal range, leading to an EGFR calculation in that case of 98, also pretty good. And in that same blood draw, my cystatin C was even better, even lower, leading to an estimated glomerular filtration rate of 113, which is fantastic. Fantastic. So my kidneys are in good shape. I feel pretty good about that. And I now know that at least in me, supplementation with creatine at 10 grams per day appears to lead to an elevated blood creatinine level, which could be misinterpreted as failing kidneys. There's no reason to believe that the level of creatinine in my blood from supplementing with creatine is in any way harmful or unwanted other than it can lead to a false impression of kidney failure. So the last thing I'll leave you with is that there are other things that can lead to an artificially high level of creatinine in your blood in addition to creatine supplementation. Those things include if you have a lot of muscle mass, which I have fairly high muscle mass for um, my age. If you eat a lot of protein, which I eat a fairly high protein diet. If you are dehydrated, I don't think I was particularly dehydrated on the day of the blood draw, but maybe I was slightly dehydrated. Or if you do a lot of physical activity, which I also do, all of those things can lead to higher levels of creatinine in your blood, regardless of whether you are taking creatine or not, which can lead to artificially low measures of kidney function. Again, just meant to illustrate that it's really important that you and your doctor understand the way that these measures are calculated and ways that you can be misled due to things other than kidney failure that can lead to higher levels of creatinine in your blood. Okay, hopefully this has been informative and helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, I'd encourage you to leave them here or on our website at www.optospanlife/podcast. And as always, if you're not yet a subscriber, please click that subscribe or follow button below. <laughs>